I love the title of your last note, January 13th, saying what to do now with Tesla shares. We've gone from parabolic to vertical. What are you doing now with Tesla shares? You know, at this point, we're, we're going back and trying to reframe the story and, and figure out what we've missed here. Um, you know, we've got a $684 price target in print. And, and the question for us is, you know, really, what's the sensitivity around earnings power for this? You know, what we can say is if we're missing on margins by 100 basis points, that translates into about $3 of earnings in our, our price target uh, year, which we're looking at 2024. And so at a 30 times multiple, which we're using, that, that uh, turns into $90 of, uh, of price on the stock. So we're doing that. We're looking at, again at you know the cycle time on their ability to bring uh, vehicles to market and whether we might be a little bit short on that uh, in the out years. And then uh, lastly, on the autonomous side, um, they clearly have a, a massive lead in terms of the fleet that they're out um, collecting data from. And uh, we're trying to understand just how quickly they could bring you know a level four, level five vehicle to market on mass uh, and, and really monetize it effectively. Colin, I want to show a chart that I'm showing to our Bloomberg audience in my terminal, which is the street price and then the median price target from, from the street at 466. The shares closing at an 887. As you take a look at some of your outlook, your forecast, what you learned from the earnings report, what fundamentally changed for you from Wednesday, the 29th, when we got earnings to now? Do you think really that they could deliver more than 500,000 vehicles? What changed? You know, we, we've always had that number in, you know, over the last several quarters. So we've been at 520,000 vehicles uh, since mid-year last year for, for 2020. So we're not, um, you know, we're not surprised by that number. I think there's a lot of folks that were playing catch up on, on where deliveries could end up. You know, I think we went into the quarter with the street at 465,000. You know, and, and I think what's happening now is people are understanding the cycle time is really, um, you know, quite advantaged. You know, the China facility was up in a year producing cars. We've got Model Y from prototype to production in 10 months. And, um, you know, if they really are giving uh, or getting that sort of cycle time, uh, it's so advantaged compared to uh, to what else is happening in the industry. You know, the, the thought uh, from your previous guest that Tesla might merge with one of the established OEMs is kind of ridiculous, given the, the fact that they've got a massive technology lead, uh, particularly on the battery chemistry side, as well as on the production um, side of things that where they've, they've They've made some major mistakes with both Model X and Model 3, but are really learning from those mistakes in terms of how they're designing factories and, and working through their process. Colin, as the story has progressed, it's provided an incredible wealth of statistics and superlatives. And I want to give you another one here on the Bloomberg terminal. And this shows uh, Tesla call options rising nearly 10,000 percent on Monday. So that's a, a huge vote of confidence from the bulls. But what is happening here? Are we seeing as what I've seen one analyst describe this as Bitcoin on wheels? Or is this really the birth of this new industrial tech transport energy behemoth that we're witnessing? You know, I think we're at the early stages of, of some really massive disruption within the, the vehicle space, um, not only just in terms of the move towards electric powertrains, but also towards how navigation systems work. Uh, and so, you know, I think there's a, a lot of, you know, price discovery happening, uh, not only with consumers, but also, also with the stock. You know, one of the things that we were asking them about on the conference call was their pricing power and how to leverage that. You know, and that really directly translates into cash flow. So for, from our perspective, you know, there's been um, a lot of technology investment uh, at Tesla uh, over the last 15 years, particularly on the battery side and increasingly on the, the AI side as they, they work into the, the autonomy space. And, and the fruits of that are, are just not clear just, just yet. But we are seeing some real advantage in terms of yield on, uh, or on range with, uh, with the, the vehicles. Um, you know, and that's something that people didn't really believe six months ago, and it's really proven out to be a pretty substantial advantage, and it's really based in material science. And so I think as those realities start to sink in with investors, they're, they're starting to consider things like 10% market share for Tesla in the vehicle market, which, which was, you know, kind of an un, unfathomable thought a couple of years ago, is now being a potential reality, and, and what does that translate into in terms of the size of the company? I'm just wondering what you're looking out for in terms of risks for Tesla. What might be a catalyst that could make this uh, parabolic rise uh, sort of return to, to more normality? You know, there's, there's any number of things. You know, certainly the macro environment for vehicles is, is a major concern. You know, the, the safety regulations around autonomy is, is another thing that we're watching and how regulations evolve pretty quickly. 
And, and then really it's about supply chain issues uh, for us. It, it seems like the, the company has really gotten themselves organized to, uh, to be able to ramp quickly. And one thing that we're watching pretty closely is what's happening with the tier ones. You know, Tesla's gone from a bit of an annoyance for some of these uh, tier ones and, and potentially, you know, something to experiment with. So being a, a must have customer if they're going to be on the bleeding edge of where technology goes and for their survival, especially if Tesla's making major market share. And so that supply chain, um, you know, disadvantage that they've had historically is, is potentially turning into an advantage. And how they manage that, I, I think, is going to be important important for us from a risk perspective in, in terms of their ability to ramp quickly.